Hi, thanks for joining me in this Omni Update web accessibility training. My name is Justin Stewart and I'm a web developer here in communications and marketing. As we're getting started, the first question to ask is, what are we talking about when we talk about web accessibility? Well, web accessibility refers to the inclusive practice of removing barriers that prevent interaction with or access to websites by people with disabilities. The second question is, why? Why should we care about web accessibility? Well, first, it's the right thing to do. We don't want to exclude people from your content based on their ability. Second, it's good design. Your content will be more organized and more search engine optimized, so people will be able to find the content that you've spent time creating. Lastly, it's the law. Okay, to start off, the good news is that all the templates that we use were built with accessibility in mind. So there's just a few key things to think about to really make your website accessible. The first thing we're gonna talk about is header tags. All right, when we look at header tags, think of them as an outline for the page. And don't just think about what would look good in this area. So for a lot of the templates, we already have the header one tag defined by the page title. So start with a header two. And then if there's a section that kind of falls under a section two, we could use a header three. Make sure that you use the header tags in order. So why is this important? Well, screen readers can navigate through the page using the header tags. Header tags are also important for users that can scan the page visually because it chunks the content and it makes it easier to absorb. The next thing we're going to talk about is images. And images can really add value to a page. They could add information, visual interest, and they're a great way of chunking out the content on the page. There's just a few things you need to keep in mind to make sure that the images are accessible. The main thing is make sure that you include a text description or alt text. The alt text field is just below the image URL field. The description should communicate ideas rather than a spatial narrative. And don't struggle to include more information than someone who is consuming the information visually would get. The last thing is don't include pictures with text in them. Because a screen reader can't read the text in a picture. And also, text in a picture, what some users may access the content by enlarging it. And when you enlarge the image, the text also becomes more pixelated. Most your images should be pretty straightforward in providing alt text. But when you get into things like images of charts and graphs, it could become a little bit more complicated. Feel free to contact our office for resources in making these images accessible. The next thing we're going to talk about is HTML tables. And HTML tables are a great tool for displaying tabular data within your website. The first thing to note, a table should never be used for layout. The next thing is, the first step in making your tables accessible is adding a table caption. The table caption will display as a title above your table. To add a table caption, select the table icon in the lower left hand corner of the WYSIWYG editor. Next, select the table caption checkbox in the lower right hand corner and select insert. As we continue the conversation about tables, next we're going to talk about table headers. And table headers are kind of the labels that define the content in the rows or columns. So first we'll define the table headers. So select the column of the table headers, and then go over and select the table cell properties icon. It should be in the bottom row of the WYSIWYG editor and the third button over. So go over into this uh, right hand column, select table cell type header, and then the look in the field below that. The item is scope. In scope, 
uh, defines the relationship with the table head editor. So is the table content going up and down? Then we'll select column. If it's side to side, then we'll select row. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is video. And the first step to using video on your website is uploading it to YouTube. Once the video is uploaded into YouTube, we have a handy snippet, which is just a little piece of reusable code that will allow you to embed the video into the Omni Update page. All right, so then to talk about the first thing to think about in making your video accessible is including captions. And captions are just kind of like an audio transcript of your video. And the great thing is that YouTube actually does a lot of the work for you. So it'll go through and try to auto caption all the text within your video. And then you could just go in there and make any small corrections where YouTube may have gotten a few words wrong. All right, and then another thing to think about that comes up occasionally is what if there's a video that you're looking to include that's already on YouTube but it may not have captions. Well, there's a handy tool called Amara will allow you to overlay the captions onto the video. And if you have a video that um, meets this criteria, you could just contact your office for some assistance. All right, the last thing we're going to talk about today is PDFs. And we're really trying to restrict the use of PDFs on the website. We only recommend you use PDFs if you need to preserve the formatting of the document or you expect the user to print out the document. If the PDF is really just informational, it's best to convert the PDF to HTML. First, HTML is more accessible, it'll be more mobile friendly, and it'll really be more uh, findable for users who are searching your content. All right, so the next, second thing we should talk about with PDFs is if you're using a scan document, make sure that you run it through an OCR application which is kind of, which is an optical character recognition application. So it'll, it'll scan the picture of um, your text and it'll detect all the characters and make it machine readable. So someone with a screen reader will be able to access the, the text within the document. The last thing to note um, in making sure that your PDFs is accessible as possible is try to avoid PDFs with complicated layouts or multiple columns. All right, well thank you for joining me with this web accessibility training. And as I go, I'll leave you with a few additional resources so you can continue this web accessibility journey. Some, some note is the Section 508 standards, which really define um, the standards for web accessibility. And then there's a great Section 508 checklist. So if you're interested in going through your content and making sure that everything is accessible. And lastly, if you have any questions, feel free to email, email me at stuartj at binghamton.edu or give me a call at extension 4986. Thank you.